Did you yell at her like, back off, back so I, off? I, she just kept coming at me. So I holstered my weapon, turned around, and ran. And she so was you, chasing me through the streets of Coney Island <laughs> with the broken bottle. It looked like Benny Hill. Wait, People were looking at her. That means you put it back in I there? I put it back in because I knew I was going to run. And yeah. God forbid I trip. Pocket party. The party starter went to work. I like my women like I like my... Cats! Cats! <laughs> Persian! <laughs> I like my women like I like my underwear. Underwear. <laughs> Black. <laughs> and supportive. <laughs> I like my women like I like my IKEA furniture. IKEA furniture. <laughs> uh, easy to put together, uh, losing a screw and, and, and comes with some Swedish meatballs. <laughs> I like my women like I like my... Cat! Cat! We already did that, dumbass. <laughs> Remember Persian? <laughs> what are you, like three behind or something? And we're back. Hey, everybody. It's your host, Darren Carter, the party starter with the one and only Mr. John DeResta. Thank, Thank you. you. In my balls. No. Hey, listen, guys. Sorry we don't have a camera this episode. <laughs> I forgot to bring my camera. I charged it and everything, and then I bring the bag, and I got the extension cord, everything except for the camera. But that's okay, because sometimes I feel when it's when a podcast isn't on camera, I feel slightly even more comfortable. Wow. Is that why I have your, your, is that why you have your hand on my inner thigh? <laughs> Hashtag me too. Yo. No, you know dude, what I mean? back no, it off. When you're with the camera, you got to kind of make sure you're like... This con- is not okay. <laughs> yeah, this is not okay. Hey, I'm an For ally. For real, dude. I'm an ally. <laughs> I've been hearing that word a lot lately. I'm an ally. <laughs> yeah. Dude, can you imagine being a comedian now, starting out now? I don't even know... <laughs> Yeah, I've been hearing all these buzzwords. Like last night, this guy was on stage at the comedy store. Right. And uh, he was, he looked totally, he looked like a, he looked like a regular white dude. But then he's on stage saying he's a certain ethnicity that was, and then people were kind of going with it because it's like, whatever, well, you know, hey, if that's what he wants to identify right. as. And then, and then at one point he said that he was half blah, blah, blah. But I was just like, man, these guys, you know, everyone has an angle now. Like, it can't just be funny. They got to be like, I'm this and I'm that. And I'm, oh, wow. My yeah, parents are from the. Oh, yeah. And See, I'm I haven't noticed it as much. I have not yeah. noticed it, but I'm, in, I'm on a different circuit. Well, I don't know. That circuit, well, you know what it is? It's, I think it's because I, I saw like the up and coming comedians. The yeah, you're seeing, the, you're yeah. seeing what, what probably the business wants to buy, right? right? Put it that way. Yeah, I know. Put it that way. I know. Wow, that's almost scary. I know. Yeah. Exactly. You watch this. I think I told yeah. you. A friend of mine said, you know, when you run around Manhattan, you do five or seven shows a night, you know, yeah. like on a Friday or Saturday night, yeah. you make you 250, 400. <laughs> right, right. But your cab ride, cab ride, subway, cab ride, Uber. Um, from what I was told now, on almost every show you do, you're performing for like a whole group of maybe young teenage kids because wow. one of the people on the bill oh. they follow so now you're doing jokes about being married or smoking pot or heavy metal and you're in front of a group of 250 17 year old quakers yeah <laughs> yeah you and know they, what I mean? yeah and they want to see like their guy they their just gu- want to see their, their guy, their guy it's, like, it's the ultimate bringer show instagram reels but the guy their guy is like but he's not yeah. big enough to put to put on his own show yet yeah so he's dropped into a regular set yeah but then he comes out and has no talent no skill but they love it though we don't we're like come on man no, i'm just saying yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's weird it, being funny and showing yeah. up on time yeah. Is down on the list. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, you think, oh, I'm going to be a good person, show up on time, be funny. It's like, yeah, it's funny you say that. I just had a conversation with Mike Black on the previous episode, and we were talking about our boy, uh, Brian Swinehart. Hey, hey. Yeah. He just opened up for a comic on the road out in Florida at one of those big clubs, like the Improv. And right. He goes, man, I learned a lot, man. Like, you know, uh, you know how, like, the headliner, quote unquote, or no, not quote unquote, he is a headliner, but... He goes, you know how he's kind of an a-hole? He goes, I think it works for him, man. Like, you know how we're all nice, and after the show, we're trying to, like, do the meet and greet and meet everybody and give them a sticker. And he goes, he likes to go to the green room, smoke a joint, and drink a shot of whiskey and wait till everyone leaves. 
And then he's like, all right, boys, let's go. And as we're walking, they're like, they're saying the guy's name. Hey, headliner, headliner. They're saying his name, though. Right. And, he go, and, he, and he'll smile and wave, but he, under his breath, he's like, keep walking, everybody, keep walking. Yeah, no shit. And then, he, and then he said he turned to one of the openers, and he goes, see, the headliner guy goes, you got good at it. You used to be like a little puppy and run over there and, you know, everybody, thanks for coming in. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and I then, got flashlights, stickers, yeah, exactly. and T-shirts. Yeah. Guys, make sure you give us a like and subscribe. I like I women like I like my merch. I'm a woman like I like my merch in the trunk of my car. <laughs> Don't worry. Be hacky. <laughs> I like my women like I like. Give me another one. Why not? I like my women like you just released the beast. I like my women like I like my prescription shoes. Prescription shoes. Thick. <laughs> Some big tongues. Yeah. In pairs. <laughs> Three tongues. Three tongues. I don't even know. Do they even have subscription shoes? <laughs> I'm wearing them. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Is it pub subscription or prescription? Prescription. Oh, wow. Because you got the toe that the... Uh yeah. I have nine toes. I just found out. You know who else had nine toes? Who? For real. This is not a joke. John yeah. Gotti had nine toes. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm just the, kidding. <laughs> no, it's a, it's, wow. a, it's more of a fact than it yeah. is a hacky concept. Wow. wow. Hey, instead of fun facts, you could do fun hacks. Fun hacks. Fun hacks. <laughs> Italian <laughs> people eat sausages. Dude, that's funny. <laughs> but By the way, this guy that was being all woke on stage and everything... They weren't really laughing at his history lesson because he was giving a history lesson, too, about America. And, oh, no. Uh, it's just weird, dude. It's like, whatever. Maybe I'm being too angry on this episode, but whatever. He was just like, you just look at that going, what happened to the funny, you know? And he was talking about, my people have been depressed, which is funny because he looks like a white guy up there, mm. <laughs> which is hilarious. And then... Then he, you know, then he admits that he is half whatever, and then, but then once he started getting into the stereotype jokes, that's when everyone laughed. Yeah, know? well, stereotypes exist for a reason, and people identify with them. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we had to make them illegal is—it's kind of stupid. But you know, what do I know? I do know this: I'm doing three to four or five sets a week in some real backroom places. And when I announce, because uh, I do, uh, I'm not sure if you know, I was working the night Tupac got shot. Yeah. So, I mean, you know what happened. You've told that on the story a yeah, lot. But yeah. yeah, we, yeah. He, it's true, guys. He used to be NYPD cop. He was uh, in transit. And then also yeah. the last few years, I was NYPD. Yeah. I was a member of both police departments. And the night Tupac got shot, he got shot through the scrotum. Yeah. And he lost the testicle. And I'll never forget it. You know why, right? Why? Because that was the night Tupac <laughs> became one Pac. <laughs> When you do that joke, do never let go, Pac. When you tell that story, what, how do people react? It's funny you ask. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny about yeah. a good 60% of the time, they groan out. Yeah. The other 40%, not only does it hit, but I could feel the wave coming. And mm. as soon as I say Tupac, I'm ready with some dumb physical reaction. Yeah. That's, I'm already topping off a laugh that yeah. I felt the wave. Mm. And I just have to find the right, like, in other words, I know it could work. It's like the ultimate joke that I could figure out. Yeah. And I haven't yet. Obviously, because you just asked me, did it, does it work at all? Because for me, it doesn't work. Personally, it doesn't work. Because I, I, the first time you said it, it was like hook, line, and sinker. And I was like, you were there when he got shot? And you're like, oh, yeah, dude. Da, 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 da. And then I was there the night one Pac. No, I'm sorry, two Pac. Became one part, and I was like, "Ah!" Oh, but that's you felt that's, cheated. But that's what you wanted, though. Maybe, maybe you want that. No, I fe you've, uh, you felt cheated in a way. Yeah. Well, yeah. what what has happened, um, <laughs> is, like I said, it the the one out of four times that it hits, yeah, it really hits, and we all enjoy it to get. We all enjoy oh. the silliness. Yeah. Watch this: the one out of four times that it hits. It hits in a Steve Martin type of way, like, oh, you know, come on, dude. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, you, yeah. You, not only is it funny, but we get it. You set us up, you sucked us in. Yeah. And then you hit us with a. With a now, what, how does it work when there's a lot of Tupac fans in the audience? I had a very unusual reaction um, about a month ago at the Laugh Factory in Long Beach. I got a huge appreciation. Applause. It wasn't just ha 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 one pock two pock. Mm. Like I didn't rush to this, and I said I was yeah. there and held his hand, and and all of a sudden I got this wave of like, this fucking guy saved Tupac's life. 
Like yeah. that's the, the, yeah. the I got this wave of appreciation. Yeah, and then when you hit him with the punchline, yeah, like, hey, 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 come on, guy. I thought we were friends over here. Is that what they said? No, 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 oh, no. But oh. you know what happened uh, at the Long Beach Laugh Factory? Since I have to explain to people, I'm the guy from Miss Congeniality. I lost seventy or eighty pounds. That's why you don't recognize me. Yeah. So I have to say what, like, what movies I've been in, and, and yeah. it look well. I, you know, I identify as an asshole, right? That's good. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what my pronouns are? No. He, him, she, it, they, uh, douchebag, a hole. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because I, you know what, I identify as an asshole. Yeah. You know that, right? That's good. Yeah. No, it, I, yeah. I mean, I was born that way. Yeah. And you identify it as I, well. I listen. I have to let people know. Did they have an asshole reveal party for you? No, that day. No. no. Guess what it was? What was it? It's really, really, really inside stuff. I was four years old mm-hmm. at my fourth birthday, and I was making all my uncles and aunts and grandparents laugh. And you know what I thought to my mind? What? So what? I can make these assholes laugh. <laughs> yeah. That's when I knew. So what? I can make these assholes at laugh. At four years old. So what? At four yeah. years old. Can I make strangers laugh? <laughs> you know how inside yeah. that is? Yeah. Like, I wasn't even impressed, but my own, I was too funny. I yeah. already knew I had it. <laughs> I don't remember Fist the question. Bump, not even on camera. What was but the yeah. question? Yeah. Uh, did you have an, 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 an like a an asshole? Oh, that's, like a that's the moment party, like a, where I know. Yeah. I, I just know yeah. that I can make anybody laugh, so I can get away with more what? More more uh, asshole ish tendencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right? I could remind you, but yeah. that I'm in uh, twelve to fifteen movies. That I worked with six Oscar winners in scenes, improving. Yeah. That I did the Tonight Show as a couch guest. Right. I can remind people. You know why? Because you're an asshole. <laughs> I'm an asshole. Dude, I'm from Long yeah. Island. I'm an asshole. Well, I um, suffer from the Butterfuco effect. You know what that is? No, what's that? Well, you know what the butterfly effect is? That even yeah. the way a butterfly oh. flies can affect the whole world? Oh, wow. I've, heard, I've been hearing that lately. I'm a victim of the Butterfuco effect. Ooh. So when I say I'm from Long Island, they think of him. Mm. And I'm already cursed. I'm taught and feathered yeah. before I yeah. say a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah. the Butterfuco yeah. effect. Oh, I like they that. They think I'm him. <laughs> yeah. And you're starting to look more like him. <laughs> I didn't think so, but... Right, he if, has the salt and pepper with hair. With the dress, when you dress up. He's you got know? the wings. Yeah, the wings. You're getting the gray wings, the white wings. The white wings, you wasque wabbit. I will tell you this. I saw you in Long Beach. We've, you've been doing the Laugh Factory a lot down there. Yeah. And uh, and it's cool. Like, I saw you play like... A, and it's more... The audience in Long... LBC, baby. It's a lot more urban. You know, black, Latino, blue-collar, dock workers, and tourists... And uh, yeah, they love you, man. Remember, I told you that I saw a group of uh, there was a family. Or I don't know. There was like couples, uh, two black dudes, two ladies. And uh, I talked. One of the guys was smoking outside, and he was right. like, "He's like, yeah, my homie just got out of. He was locked up for whatever, however many years." And he goes, "Man, we need this laugh, man. We got this laugh, man. Thank you for getting that, getting our laugh on." And I saw that guy get up out of his chair. The guy was in prison. Get up out of his chair. And you 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 hit him with a punchline so hard that he actually got up and ran like. <laughs> three or four steps yeah i don't know if you remember i told you that you did tell me but and, it's fu- it's funny to hear and that you, and you're like which joke was it did i, did I tell you which joke no was? I, I forget I, I i would like you to rack your brain and text me you don't have to yeah. think of it now yes I but will. watch this i did cut all the way back to the homeless outreach van i had done a set at caroline's it's an eight o'clock show i did a like, 10 minute set and now i'm in a homeless outreach van driving with another cop yeah. In the passenger seat at 9.30 at night. So it's an hour later. And he was a Hispanic guy. And I don't remember his name. And he goes, how was your set? I said, ah, dude, this guy went on before me named Will. Mm. Young black dude. And he goes, all he did was talk about how uh, Haitian people. Well, he's really funny. Will Savants, I think, right? I don't know his Will, last name. I, I think that's who that is. W-I-L, Will. I don't know. It could be a different. This is a long time ago. I think, it's, I, think I know who he is. I just, you see him on BET. But he said... Uh, he was funny. I said, dude, he said he, he did a routine that, uh, that if you're from Jamaica, the island of Jamaica, you don't pronounce your H's in the right spot, and you add them when they're not needed. Mm-hmm. Give, yeah. me <laughs> Give me an he gumlet. Give me an arm and he gumlet. And somehow this hit. Not like, it's not hitting now. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. When I retold that to my partner in the homeless outreach van, he, he was sitting back, like he had already put the chair back to sleep. Yeah. And he was kicking the dashboard with both feet, like like he was in a UFC fight. Yeah. You know, like up yeah. kicking. Yeah. 
And dude, I remember that physical, like he had to act out. So when you told me a guy was running down the aisle, um, you know what happened in Kansas City? I have this on video. I didn't see it while I was doing my set, but this person dropped to their hands and knees and wow. crawled from one corner of the comedy <laughs> club wow. to the bathroom because they oh. didn't want John DeResta to fuck with them. Yeah. And then dropped to the knees. And t- while I'm watching my video on stage, I just see a striped shirt, like black and white, like a prison shirt. <laughs> like the Hamburglar. Like the Hamburglar. And all wait, you wait, see wait, is wait, the hump wait, wait, wait. in the back. Like wow. if they had a fin, it would look like a shark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and all you saw go, and then like three jokes later, you yeah. saw it or he or she, czar. Yeah. I don't want to transgender anybody. Yeah. And they would do, use the restroom and came back. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it was funny. That's funny, And man. that was the weekend I told Will C. to stick with it. Do you know Will C.? He's Army, Navy, Air Force, yeah. Marines. Mm-hmm. Yep. He said that that night I told him he was really funny to stick with it, and I changed his life. That's cool. Yeah. I don't know if you know this. John DeResta changed his lives. Yeah. He's an, you're an a-hole, but you're, you're sometimes you Dude, use your powers for guess good. guess what? I thought you were going to say an angel, oh. <laughs> and you said I'm an a-hole. <laughs> you could use that. Yeah. There's something to the yeah. rhythm. What's the word usually you put before angel? So the, Hell's angel. Yeah. Or um, devil and angel, angel and devil, mm. angel food cake. I'm, a, I'm an a-hole. Yeah, you're, you're, uh, you identify as an angel. <laughs> you know. I identify as an a-hole. It's an a-hole. Yeah. But, and you could be like, but it's not just me that I, other people identify me as that too. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you could see it from a mile away, dude. Look, $10,000 fake teeth. Hold on. Yeah. The homeless tan. <laughs> the hair from the ni- guess what right before the show I got a, a cell call did you see it uh-uh. 1980 called oh, it shit. wanted its hair back <laughs> look yeah. at this hair You're like, we're like- who am I Chuck Zito oh I like Chuck Zito who am I Chuck yeah, Zito that's funny he has the same puff right there yeah 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 he does he, oh, yeah, he has a pompadour <laughs> that pompadour I see him because I is follow- mine a pompadour Mm, it could be. You could get a pompadour. You should go for the pompadour. It's it's almost there, the right? Bob's in a weird Big way. Boy pompadour. Pump it up more. <laughs> you should get. The, I can't do any of that crap. I'm bald. Pom- you got to go for the pompadour. Pompa dump. Pompadour. Oh. So, anyways, I was a little rambunctious when I got here. A little ornery. I don't know. I, did, I what it was. It was. I think you know. I got off the. I'm not going to say exactly where we are right now. We'll give it a broad spectrum. We're in the valley. I think sometimes you do you say the city. Yeah, I live in North Hollywood. So I, yeah, North Hollywood. And I love your jokes about it, but I get off the freeway and there was a freaking fire, man. Like a, like the exit, you know, the exit that I got off of here. There was a fire, like a homeless encampment, like that was burning. It was Aye. like, it was about, I don't know, twenty. It was a roaring fire. This wasn't any like BS type of thing. It was a roaring fire. Like, yeah, this a fireman can get hurt. The flames were Especially like... Especially you said something. Yeah. things might be blowing up, yeah. like gas tanks or yeah. coolers. because when I got to the bottom of canned the... Canned beer. Yep, I was going to like tell the... There's some guys that were, you know, had the little taco truck. and I, I, I know exactly, in that little yeah. parking spot next to the building. And I rolled the window down and I smelled the smoke and then, uh, and then the cars are coming up behind me and I couldn't really tell them. So I, I drove and about 20 seconds later, I heard boom, like an explosion. Now, those guys, the fire yeah. and those guys that are selling that food are behind the cheap movie theater, the dollar yeah. movie yeah. theater. Mm-hmm. Now, watch watch me bring this story back to me because I identify as an asshole, yeah. right? I got what's part of it. I got to top everything and everything has to come back to me. Right. Like, I'm telling you about this emergency that I yeah, saw. Yeah, I'm not even listening. You're like, hey, one time I was, I in, just, I was watching Miss Congenia. No, no, I'm was, just waiting. was in that movie I'm theater. waiting to top it. I'm yeah. not even listening. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I got a great story to I'm top I'm an it. asshole. Oh, I got a great story. Guess okay. what movie I Wait. saw there twice? What? Your own movie. Miss Congeniality. <laughs> I Dude. still have the ticket. It was a dollar to see it. Dude, I... I uh, I went there one. You know how there used to be Chinese food there for like a dollar, like really cheap. No, Chinese I don't food. remember that. I so, do remember the movie theater. So Gold, I used to belong to Gold's Gym over there. There was a Gold's Gym. Yeah, sure, I, I, it's still there. I was a member too. I, I and I, but I used to. I not only was I a member, I actually used to go, John. I don't know if you ever went, but I used to go. Okay, did you go there? Zing, I'm mean, having five, zing. seven times. Zing. Just no, enough to see like that these crazy yeah. muscle heads would go there. Yeah. They'd sit in their Mercedes Benz between sets oh, gosh, and work really? on their tan. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah it was weird. I, like the, the gym was their job. It's kind of weird, right? Like it's like a, it's not the best neighborhood, but then you'd see like, I remember seeing Gene Simmons in there. But I, look at all yeah. those buildings yeah. around it. I've lived here 24 years and every one of those buildings has been uh, <clears throat> abandoned around wow. it for 24 years. Yeah. And I do you know what happened there? Yeah. I, I hate to be a bummer. I know. 
You know when you're going to say the North Hollywood bank robbery? No, we know about that. Yeah. But when you're looking at the gym and you look to the right, there's like seven buildings and then a corner like that goes down a street and there's nothing. Everything's boarded up. Yeah. There was an Italian couple that owns a pizza parlor in there and they were murdered in their pizza joint. No. For the money. Wow. Like in like in ninety five, ninety six, and that that donated towards like they closed and someone else said, well, I don't want to get killed. Yeah. I wonder if I ever went there because that's that's when I moved to L.A. And the four, I don't remember it, uh, the pizza ball. I heard that story. Yeah. And then the 44-minute shootout was at the bank I go to now. Yeah. Oh, you go to that bank? I go to that bank. Wow. Yeah. And watch this. You I've, should do a meet and greet with people. I've done 6,555 <laughs> sets as a comedian. Wow. Or, you know, podcasts, radio shows, yeah, TV yeah. shows. 6,555. And at one of them, yeah. at the pie shop in Valencia... It was a really big crowd. It was like an animal rescue. You know, everyone's coming to give the money to the stray dogs that have one eye. Yeah. And it was oversold and packed. And I had a really good set. And I came off. And it was a short Mexican guy, husky, no neck, big handlebar mustache and a shaved head. And he's like, bro, Cheech and Chong, total East L.A. Bro, yeah. dude, in down my eyes, fucker. I was crying down my eyes, bro. <laughs> I never in my fucking life. Yeah. Down my eyes. Down my eyes. <laughs> now, guess who he was? He's already funny, right? Yeah. He's yeah. crying down my eyes because of me. He was one of the cops that took a bullet at the 44-minute shootout. He was grazed in the head. None of them were Whoa. hurt bad. Yeah. One cop was shot in the ankle, and, and this poor guy was shot in the head. Yeah. It grazed his head. But guess what he said to me after the show, right? Down my eyes, fucker. Dude. Down the, my eyes. I've heard some compliments like that. It's crazy, right? Down my eyes. I, I heard, a, <laughs> I did a San Pedro down by the docks. There was a, They rented out a hotel ballroom and this old school cholo, same thing with the giant, I think they call them veteranos or whatever, like the bushy mustache. Yeah, yeah, big, l- look like prison pussy. Yeah, and the guy goes, you made me laugh hard. You made my face hurt. <laughs> right? And then, yeah, then yeah, yeah, pop, yeah. I should bring that joke back. It's then, great. It's true, right? He goes, you made me laugh hard. You made my face hurt. Then he paused and he goes, don't be making my face hurt. Oh, no. Like a threat? Yeah, yeah but he's, he was joking yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then he, he bought my CD. You know, he wanted, I gave him half off because, you know, what are you going to do? You know? Right. He threw me a little something. And he, but he was joking around. He goes, he goes, I'm going to go. This is back when people bought CDs and had CD players. He goes, I'm going to go to my car right now and listen to it. And if it ain't funny, I'm coming back. Funny. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, hey, all right. <laughs> well, watch this. Yeah. I probably told you this story, but it's worth telling again. I opened up for, um, who is that? Uh, Tom Likas. Tom so, Likas. 2,600 drunken Mexican guys. That's right. And it was a very anti-woman comedy show. It yeah. was like a heavy metal concert. Yeah. And it was F women and F this and F child support. And, and so I came out and... Tom Likas, if you don't know, he was an L.A. dude and... Uh, he was the Howard Stern of the afternoon times yeah. 50. Though. Where he was like, never spend more than $40 on a date. Like yeah, yeah, there you like go. He would, he would like, that's right. And people come, <laughs> hi, Tom. Hi, yeah. Dad. Hello, son. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're like the dad I never had. Dad, I got a question. Yeah. Uh, girls only, there are gold diggers out here in LA, and I don't have a Mercedes, and I live in a one studio apartment with four roommates. What should I do? Well, here's what you do you tell her that your real car is in the shop, and that's a loner that you're driving. And when she sees your apartment, tell her that your home is being built. You're being, you're having another wing <laughs> at it, and that's why you're staying in the, in the single bedroom apartment. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome, son. Yeah, dude, that sounds yeah. like him. So after the stand-up show at the Will Turn Theater, 2,600 people, yeah, they were all drunk. There was like 10 or 15 audience members that were passed out cold when the lights came on. And every seat had an empty whiskey bottle under yeah. it. Oh, every yeah. seat. Oh, yeah. every, like, like dozens yeah. and dozens and dozens and dozens yeah. of liquor bottles. Mm. And I snuck out the back because he was selling merch and everyone's shaking hands out front. And I said, I had enough. Yeah. So I snuck out the back door of the Will Turn Theater through an alleyway to the parking right behind it. And I had like a suit jacket and a video camera. And I had my arms were full, like with a change yeah. of clothing and tripod, the whole bit. Right. You know, uh, swag, free t shirts, right? Boys' night out. And a guy pulls up real and skids. And the window goes down, and he sticks a baseball hat and a magic marker out. 
and I'm holding all this stuff. And he yeah. goes, yo, bro, what's up, fucker? You are funny, bro. He goes, sign my hat. <laughs> and I give him a look like my arms are full. Yeah. He goes, oh, oh we'll steal your shit, bro. <laughs> He yeah. goes, give me a, a signature or we're going to steal your shit. <laughs> and those were guys that liked me. Yeah. And I put all the shit on the ground, signed the hat. And he was like, no problem. And the next car that pulled by through the alleyway, yeah. like they were leaving yeah. parking, like leaving a concert, everyone's pulling out. The next guy slowed down right next to me. And just, I had a moment. He gave me the eyes and like, you know, you did a great job. Yeah. And he was sucking on a bong that was like six feet long. Like it was, listen, it was so long, it was like across the transmission into the driver's feet. Wow. And he and he was just suckling up the big hit of smoke. <laughs> and he gave me the eyes like you were funny. That's funny. And you know who I had a moment like that with? <clears throat> Ooh. I was at LAX airport, and I don't know why I thought of it today. Uh, Tommy Chong. I saw him at LAX airport and I wanted to say hello and I didn't want to bother him and he was very accessible and I looked at him and he looked at me and we both smiled. We had this really oh, funny moment. Cool. Like he knew that I was funny and he yeah. knew that I was paying him respect oh. and he knew don't bother me, dude. You know, I don't yeah. fucking need it. Like, I know it's, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, gotcha. Okay, okay, you smoke weed, you grew up listening to me, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, 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 dude, okay, that's I gotcha. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can Damn. you imitate him? No. No, but I got to open for Cheech Marin. Uh, of Cheech and Chong. I got to open for him a few times. And the one thing I noticed about him, which is, uh, I remember we got pizza after the show. And well, first of all, two things I noticed. Um, at that show that was up in Humboldt County, up at Chico, right? Right. And I noticed like after the show, a lot of these old hippies came. You know, they look like old hippies and they had album covers and old Cheech and Chong type stuff and they and posters and he was autographing it and signing it. That was the vibe. You know, like fans right. were like, fans you know right hey you see this you in my dorm room man in like 69 or 74 yeah, that yeah. kind of vibe when i opened for in la at the conga room down on wilshire after the show there was the same sort of thing there's about 15 people but instead of holding like records for him to sign it was people holding movie scripts that they wanted him to read so so oh, he wow. could if you know maybe he'll be my chance and if he likes the script yeah, he'll yeah, green light yeah, yeah. it and i'll be oh a, no shit yeah, and he took weird. them I don't think so. Because I, I don't. I, I don't think so. I don't. I don't know about yeah. you. I, yeah. I don't know if the people offer you, but... No, they, they don't offer me scripts. They do not. There's one right there. <laughs> Look. Oh, cool. Yeah, bro. This ain't day camp. Yeah, that's right. By the way, I want to give a big shout out right now. Let's start out with Christopher McRae. By the way, if you guys want to get a shout out, leave comments on the YouTube channel and leave any kind of... Re if you really want to help this podcast, whatever platform you're listening, if it's Apple, if it's Spotify... Do the whole thing, like give it the like. It helps the algorithm. It helps people discover this podcast. It helps this show get more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Visibility, Pocket Party yeah. Podcast. So uh, right today, I'm going to read the, um, the the last few people that I, uh, I just picked a handful of people that like to interact with us on the Pocket Party Podcast okay. on the YouTube channel, Darren Carter on YouTube, D-A-R-R-E-N. And I want to give a big shout out to Christopher McRae. Uh, he's out there driving around Southern California listening to the podcast. Nice. He, All right. And if we mention like an old TV show or something, a lot of times he'll send me a clip. To, uh, that's uh, a free Somebody clip asked on me today if I have a manager. I said, of course, Ruben Kincaid. <laughs> and the person said, that sounds familiar. Is he big? I go, it's <laughs> yeah. from the Partridge family. <laughs> yeah. Come on, get happy. And then when they would get sad, they go, come on, get hacky. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, here we go. Hello uh, world, there's, there's a, a joke I've been singing. telling. <laughs> Come on, get, get hacky. <laughs> Hello world, there's a joke I've been telling. <laughs> Come on, get, get hacky. <laughs> we started comedy thinking we were original. <laughs> Come on, get hacky. And then when now we tell street jokes <laughs> on a cruise ship. Oh gosh. And then whenever whenever something sad would happen on Partridge Family, they would slow it down. They go. <laughs> Come on, get, get hacky. <laughs> That's funny. Shout out to Christopher McRae. Shout out to Ricky Moody Music. Shout out to Wilfredo. I can't read my own writing. Wilfredo Matos. Shout out to Patches Tanks Honey. Shout out to Drew Hillman. We love you, Drew. I, you know what? He, he Drew always leaves the same thing, pretty much. Another great episode. And dude, that makes my night. Whenever I read that, that makes my night. 
And the number one commenter, I have to give him a big shout out, and he loves you, John DeResta, and he loves Mike Black, and he loves this episode. I mean, he loves this podcast. Uh, and we love him, because he's guy, he leaves timestamps. He listens to something, he'll leave a timestamp. He'll be like, that was... Like, damn. What is his name again? His name is 100% Canadian Maple Stirrup. Oh, yeah, I think I've seen that. 100% Canadian Maple Stirrup. He'll actually put, like, thanks for the shout out or whatever. He'll be like, yeah, that dude. Was, you stung him bad or dude. 100% Canadian yeah. Stirrup. 100% Canadian Maple Stirrup. I used to think I said Maple Syrup, but it's Yeah, maple it's a stirrup. play on words. He's crafty. He's, he's crafty. He gets around. He's crafty. crafty. He's yeah. always down. <laughs> Dude, that was one He's of He's just my type. That was one of the first albums I bought that licensed to ill Beastie Boys. I love that album. Did you like that album? Not at all. I think the Beastie mm. Boys are the worst. There's like a, 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 yeah. there's two songs maybe that I like. And the other 50 songs, I can't wow. stand. What song did you like? Do you remember? Uh, yeah. Brass Monkey. Brass Monkey. was a very good Brass mental monkey, anchor monkey. for me. Yeah. Um, when I was a rookie monkey. cop, yeah. a friend of mine said, you got to see my car. I got a new stereo. Yeah. yeah. You know, we were rookie cops. Yeah, yeah. And the money he got, like, and he had this little hot rod. And he said, check out this stereo. And he played Brass Monkey. And to this day. <laughs> if, <laughs> and, what, and what was the other song we were just singing? Uh... 100 make bull. Oh, he's cra- she's crafty. She she's gets crafty. around. That's probably she's the only cra- two I like. Girls, girls, girls. Girls that do my laundry. Girls to do the. No. From the, how about the. Uh, how about this one? Do you remember this one? Now, here's a little story I like to tell about yeah. three bad brothers you know so well. No, no. It sounds like that was karaoke the, at a bar mitzvah. Oh, you didn't like that? <laughs> it's karaoke at a bar mitzvah. You gotta fight. For you, right to, to party. Hack it up. What about like no sleep till no, uh, 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 Brooklyn? Uh, uh, uh. Don't like no. it. What about the um? What's so what you what you what you want? What you that one came out later? What no. you what you what Moving you want? Moving on. Oh. Give me one more. Damn, I don't know what it would be. Uh, Brass monkey. That funky monkey. monkey. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I liked I liked that album a lot. You know, but you were did you like rap music back then in the eighties? It's funny, my uh, we did for some reason in Long Island. We got into Run DMC. Oh, we so got good. to DMX. Oh, oh, you know what well, I mean? Even though we older, were all metal yeah. fans, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I we go yeah. back to when Run DMC was coming out. Like we were yeah. like, you know, I'm the king of rock. There is none higher. Sucker MCs shall call me sire. I will not quit till I retire. You want to get some of my castle? You must use fire. I don't know. I, I don't remember lyrics, but. Yeah. Dude, Run DMC is the shizzle. Yeah. They're old school. Because I don't remember back then in the 80s, like there was people that hated rap. No, no, no. And I, then there was people and that... And then yeah. uh, Anthrax brought everyone together. Anthrax, their first oh, few yeah. albums Bass, were rap Hello, like. can you go? The Incredible, the Public Enemy, number one. And then they combined with powers with, uh, with Anthrax. And then, of course, you know... Uh, you know who's from Long Island, Steven right? Steven Tyler, you know, Aerosmith, Walk right. This Way. Uh, Flavor from, Flav's from Flav Long Flav- Island. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> yeah, I loved rap though back then, especially because like it was like kind of like novelty songs. It was it would tell a story. Yeah, I like funny. It. Dude, I watch this. I know exactly where I was. Night. The first time I ever heard, um, uh, you know, the Sugar Hill Gang. It was a Jairo oh, yeah. Gomez, Jairo Gomez's Sweet Sixteen. <gasps> And they oh. played it over and over oh, yeah. and over, and it boom, was it, boom, it was boom. addicting. Boom, 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 boom. And yeah, then yeah. years later, I got transferred for two weeks. I think I might have told you this. I got transferred for Jack and uh, like jacking off as a cop. I wasn't doing the right thing. I was sitting mm. down on the train, yeah. reading a newspaper, like we had little things that just didn't show that I was effective. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I got transferred for, for, from Coney Island, where I was used to going to. District 34, my precinct, in quotes. And they transferred me to Harlem for two weeks with no locker. Mm. So I had to carry my equipment to and from. <laughs> and it wind up, the name of this part of Harlem was Sugar Hill. Oh. So there you go. That's, wow. that's my, look, I told you I have to top every story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I worked in Sugar Hill for two weeks. And as a transit cop, I didn't know any of the trains. I didn't know any yeah. of the cops. You know what I mean? We could call this podcast Toppers. And watch <laughs> yeah. this. It was such a bad neighborhood that this is when people used to pull their radio out and carry it at the swap meet or at the movies. Because they didn't want to get stolen. Because they didn't want to get stolen. Yeah. Watch this. I get off of work at midnight. I did a 4 to 12. I get off at midnight. I'm at a red light. All four red lights. 
is someone holding up two or three stereos in their hand. Wow. And the guy came right to my window, and uh, I got one for 20 bucks. He gave me a deal. Do you know why? Because he knew Sugar Hill Gang. It was my radio. Oh. He stole it. Oh, it's And I funny. bought it back. I didn't pull any cop stuff. I yeah. thought it was the funniest thing on earth. You're like, can I buy it back? <laughs> for the story. <clears throat> That's hilarious. And he knew I was a cop. Yeah. I'm a white guy with no neck, 23 years old. Driving around, driving Sugar around Hill. Sugar Hill at twelve twenty <laughs> at night. <laughs> you know, coming from District yeah, Three, yeah, it's right yeah, there. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny, dude. I bought my own stereo back and slipped it in like your mom. Wow. See what I did there? Oh, thank you. I stopped. I, I Hold mean, on, can I yeah. give my shout outs? Yeah, 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 yeah. Please uh, do. All right, my first shout out is to Adrian Vita. Hey, you, Adrian. All right. And hey, she's doing real good. Right. She's making a lot of uh, connections. Hey, making connections in the uh, maker world. Uh, so I just want to say I'm proud of her, and I'll see her in two days. Oh yeah. Thank absolutely. you. Thank you. Shout out to Jimmy Duress. Has helped me the last few months to build stuff over the web, over thank the you, phone. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Uh, and then my, uh, I'd like to thank my three kids for working so hard. Sabrina works at the Laugh Factory. Shannon is pregnant. I'm going to be a grand dude. You know that, right? Did you know that? Your granddad. Well, dude, granddad's old. I'm a grand dude. Oh. Or I live grand. in L.A., so guess what? I'm uh, I'm a grand person. You're a grand person. I can't identify whether I have a boy willy or a girl willy. No, you're kind of an asshole, so you could be the grand asshole. Yeah, there you go, dude. No, but that's your grandkids. Yeah. Dude, what's it going to be like being a... I almost said grandpa, but... Yeah, watch yourself, dude. No. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> He's not I'm not to, old. He's not ready to accept it. You don't even look like a, quote, grandpa. Uh, dude, I'm a yeah. grand dude. You're pop pop. And all I'm stuff. rustic. <laughs> you could be... Yeah, I'm rustic. There you go. You know how I could prove I'm rustic and how? vintage? How? In my underwears? Reclaimed wood. Pound it. hey Pound it. Balsa. <laughs> Reclaimed wood. Balsa. Oh. In my balsa. Dude, that's so cool. Like, yeah, so that's So you know March. what it's like to raise a son, to raise daughters? You I know, guess I know. I blocked it all out. You know the different personalities, the different things that go along with it? It's exciting to have a grandchild. Like, what's that going to be like? Wow, right, it's good right. Ch- There's an old saying, because you play with them, you have fun with them, you make them laugh. And when they do a wet poop, you hand them back. Oh, that's right. And then you send them home. Same yeah. with me. When I do a wet poop. <laughs> do you know if the you grandchild... want to see pictures? No. Do you know if the grand... It's rustic. Do you know... Uh, are the child going to be a boy or a girl, or do you... Oh, dude. I live in L.A. We don't... There's no such thing as that. You oh, know that. So you have no idea. No, it's just... We're all the same. The child will be born, and then one day uh, you'll, dude, you'll it's, decide. It's it's his, her, czar, they, she's choice. Oh, wow. Czar. How many months? Do you know what czar is? No. Czar is the new word instead of, instead of saying him or her. You didn't know that? No. It's czar's choice. Oh, gosh. And some people say czar. It's wow. czar's choice. Or how, what, um, how many months? Do you know? I think the baby's due in March. March. So like two or three months. Wow. That's how bad I am with, like, no, March? Wait, it's September. I don't October, know. November, December. You don't even, okay. No, I don't just know that, you know. You just so know there's far, a baby so on the way. That's yeah. good. Wow. I'm a grand dude. Grand dude. Or a grand person. <laughs> grand person. Right? I can't I can't identify whether I have a boy willy or a girl willy. That's great, man. That's cool. I'm a grand person. Wow. Right? Yeah. Let me ask you a question out of the blue, and you don't have to answer this. How tall are you? 5'10". Dude, that's great. My son, Austin, Austin, the base boss. He uh, went to the doctor about a month ago for a little checkup or something, and they measured him. And uh, they let him keep his shoes on, and he was five ten. So he was all he was all happy. Nice. But he's not really five ten. That's because he got to keep the shoes on. You know. But. I'm five ten, and today I weighed one eighty six. Nice. On Dude. my scale. Yeah. Oh, do you calibrate it to make yourself look lighter? No, no, no. It, yeah. it, it, like whenever I go to the doctor, it's always five pounds more. But that's the you know the yeah. clothing, the cell phone. Yeah. Yeah. I'm bloated. I'm on my period. <laughs> yeah. We're all the same, dude. I get a period. Oh, yeah, we're all the same. <laughs> we're all the same. There's no such thing as a man or a woman. You know that. That's they true. asked the woman that's going to be a Supreme Court judge to identify oh, a woman. That's true. They did ask and her. And she said, I can't. Yeah, what's the definition of What kind of, of world woman? do we live in? What? I know. Dude. What? Yeah. Well, watch this. I'm no doctor. Yeah. Right? I'm a schnook from Long Island. Right. And do you know what one of my pronouns is? No. A-hole. It's very rare. Oh, no. Well, I identify yeah. as an a-hole, oh, yeah. so one of my pronouns is... I'm a braggadocious uh, C. I'm not going to use the word. Oh, right. I'm a with, b- braggadocious yeah. C you next Tuesday. Yeah. 
Because I'm, I'm going to tell you the movies I've been in. I'm braggadocious. See. Oh, I got a, I got an idea. We're gonna, I'm going to throw out some crazy stuff and let's see if we could top stories. Okay, you okay. you start. You just give me any topic. I got any... drunk with Robert De Niro. Your turn. Okay. Um, I performed at Snoop Dogg's family reunion. Mm, I'm in two movies with Sandra Bullock. I'm in a movie with John Travolta, The Rock, and Steven Tyler, and a bunch of other people. How many lines? Um, we did eight lines of coke. Just kidding. Uh oh, I'm sniffing out extra. Hold on. If you're an extra, no, no, the I, game no, is no, over. I, no, I'm not, <laughs> I was not an extra. I almost did the. We, eight, how many lines? Eight lines of. <laughs> yeah. Come on, get, get hacky. hacky. No, I was the. Of course, I was the rental car guy. It was the. Uh, you know, it'd be cool. No, but I'm not saying top stuff. But like, let's throw out any topic. Let's see if we have any stories. Just name anything. Like, uh, I'll start. Pencil. Do you have any stories about pencils? Yes, my brother Jimmy sells a pencil that says Duresta on it. So there's pencils in this world with my last name. Your turn. See, that's what I'm saying. There's things like that, right? Like, like this could be like I think it's like stand up on the spot. No, watch this. Yeah. I'm also six degrees of separation from yeah. John Duresta. Yeah. All right, Forrest Gump can suck my dictionary. All right, that's how adventurous <laughs> my life has been. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, ask me get, anything. Uh, you, no, you give me one now. Like I said, pencil, you said. Okay. Um, crab net. Crab net. I have, no, I have nothing on crab net. We used to go crabbing as kids in Long Island at night. Yeah. On low tide, you go, we'd go jacking for crabs. Wow. In other words, you put a light on a little rowboat, and the, the blue claw crabs come to the light. Oh, wow. And then you'd scoop them with a net by hand. Wow. Like, it's called jacking. Now, wow. I'm 58 years old, jacking has a whole different meaning. Yeah. Your turn. Do you know anything about chiggers? Mm, is that a food to no. stuff? <laughs> no. It's, they're also called no see bugs. No, I don't know oh, what that is. Oh, it's like this bug. Yeah, of course you wouldn't. It was, it's in the flyover states. It's in Kansas. So we used to vacation in Kansas as a kid, and they and they, they they get caught up in your like waistband where your socks are, anything that's tight where there's like right. plastic and these little red bumps, and you, they're super. They're like worse than mosquitoes. They're itchy. Oh, I don't even want to. Yeah. Why do you even bring this up? <laughs> why don't you bring up? <laughs> I know. Well, when you said crab net, that's the closest thing I could think of. Was like because sometimes these crawdad things would come out of the hole uh, of the ground or whatever. Uh, let me think of another thing. I wish there was like a thing or a wheel I could spin. Oh, I, can I give yeah. a shout out one more to uh, Carlos? Carlos listens to the show. He's a, uh, we met at the, uh, I don't want to brag, I work at the thrift store comedy night. I headline at the thrift store. And Carlos said, uh, he called me yesterday to say, to talk about some woodworking projects. Oh. And there was a funny pause and he went, don't worry. Be hacky. And he's Shout the first out to Carlos. He's the first person I ever heard that it's it, wow. it ricocheted back. Where it came back. That's so cool. Yeah. Isn't it cool? Damn, it's cool. Yeah, so it, uh, we connected on that. And, That's really uh, cool. Did I give props to Adrian Vita? Yeah. I did, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm going to see her in two days. And then I told you about the fire in North Hollywood. <laughs> told you about that. We got the AC going. Thank you. Thank you, John, for keeping the AC on. How hot was it? It was crazy hot the last couple of weeks. Yeah, we survived it, but it was very hot. But we survived. That's as worse as it gets. I and mean, guess was, what? I dealt with it. Yeah. I, I was just like, every day, I was like, all right, it's hot. You know? Yeah. It, to me, it wasn't that bad because the humidity wasn't bad. Did you change your hours of work? Did you get up a little earlier? And yeah, you tried to get there a little early, and then maybe <clears throat> one or two days, I took a nap from like two to five. Yeah. And then went back. But yeah. it was really hot. I know. I was... Uh, I, went to I was sweating like Mike Tyson yeah. at a spelling bee. I was Watch like Mike out. Tyson. Hey, y'all. Listen, what was our new yeah. version? Come uh, on, get yeah. hacky. Hey, all right, okay. I was sweating like... Uh, O.J. Simpson with a boarding pass. I was sweating. Yeah. I was sweat. Uh, I wrote one for Fraser. How's it go? I, I was sweating like Leonardo DiCaprio's girlfriend on her 25th birthday. Mm. Ooh. Because he dumps him. Yeah, like, I get it. Yeah. She's like, close your eyes, make a wish. She opens her eyes, he's gone. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was in Palm. I got to go to Palm Springs. I did a show out there. It was great, man. It was really nice. It was fun. And it rained. It was like a torrential downpour. <laughs> Flash flood warnings, the whole thing. While you were and driving or while you were no, there? No, luckily I got there. and uh, I don't like that. I knew that it would. It, there was a possibility of rain, so I got the uh, you know I got the w windshield wipers put on. So I had the nice, clean blade. Yeah, my, you, I don't. Uh, right yeah. now, I, I, uh, I, I know I need them. Yeah. And I knew I would need them. Did you have to use your windshield wipers that day that it rained? Uh, a little bit, but right right in front of my sight, 
Yeah. The wiper looks like someone cut it with a razor blade and oh, it doesn't touch. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. You know, tomorrow morning, that's my. Just um, do it. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. And it's like, you know what it is? Because the, the, the sun, we hardly ever, it hardly ever rains, so we hardly ever use them. And then I think they're pressed against the glass and then the sun bakes them there. 100 degree temperatures all the time. And it starts to slowly disintegrate. And that's what it ruins the, you know. Mm. Then, it's yeah. like my penis. <laughs> Yeah, so I got the. Uh, I was out there. It was. Do you know what was really cool? Is and I never do stuff like this. To go to Palm Springs, I knew that Frank Sinatra lived there because I've been you know, right. reading those books, listening to his music. So I Googled where his house was, and because uh, I knew that people. Yeah, it was would, for sale recently. Yeah, and you could go there and you could you could rent it out and have parties there and stuff. So I, I Googled his address, and be, even before I checked in the hotel, I went to Frank Sinatra's house. It was like on Movie Row or whatever that neighborhood no is. No shit. It was so cool, man. Old shut eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Old blue eyes. Yeah. Of course, the gate was shut and it's you know it wasn't open. The you know it's like right. a business. I but think. But it was for sale recently, and I wanted yeah. to win the lottery. It was like it was a very high price. Yeah. But I was like, all right, if I win the lotto and bring home three hundred and ten million. Yeah. After taxes, yeah. it was like one of those weeks. Yeah. I can go spend sixty million on his house in Palm Springs or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, the Twin Palms house, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Old Shut Eyes. It was cool. It was uh, it was neat to see that. Like they had a little plaque out front. I'm like, wow. That's all I did. I just listened to Frank Sinatra the whole time I was there, like in the wow. hotel. I even brought my jump rope and jump rope in in my room because the ceiling was high enough where I could jump rope. And it was way better than going to like the the gym, you know. The, the, the I'm sure the people below you loved it. <laughs> you know what? It was a really sturdy hotel. Like yeah. it was sturdy. Like there was no like dung, dung, nothing. And besides, that's only, what you think. <laughs> I only jumped rope for like uh, ten minutes. You know. So. Mm. Yeah. You know what I was thinking of as I was jumping rope and I was in the zone? That's me beatboxing. Here's me beatboxing. They've heard me beatbox. Anyways, um, you know, uh, he has that song, New York, New York. If I can make it there, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. make it. I wonder, it's interesting because I think New York could be like a place in your mind. It doesn't actually have to be the city of New York. It could be, you know what I mean? Especially that, that's a guy who is from New Jersey. So he's going to sing well, about Well, watch this. I could yeah. top it. Yeah. You know, I could top everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I graduated the New York City Police Academy yeah. with 2,900 other uh, he, him, she, they's, czars. 2,900. I'm in the world's record mm -hmm. for the biggest police academy class in the history of the world. Wow. 2,900 of us in Madison Square Garden. And as we marched out, they played Frank Sinatra's wow. New York, New York. So it's a very good mental anchor for me. We were on the floor of Madison Square Garden graduating we all throw our hats up in the air like a bunch of d-bags <laughs> when you throw a hat in the air like that do you try to grab your you own try hat and grab back? your own hat yeah back yeah off the floor yeah that's fun yeah I never, was, I never graduated like that starts yeah. spreading your legs that's spreading yeah that's man that's a great song it, my mental anchor with that is when i first started comedy and i got my very first comedy club i ever got to perform in like not bowling alleys country bars rehabs we're talking the real comedy club that was the song they'd play before the show would start so whenever i hear that and it was in downtown fresno so in my mind it was like new york you know because it was like the, right. the big buildings you're downtown the scary part of town and big city life they play that song there and then at the comedy magic club in hermosa beach when the show's about to start at exactly eight o'clock sometimes seven fifty nine. Oh, so it's a good mental anchor same with mine they play it there too you're like yes show business and i wrote a whole nother song i've yet to get to it but i'm going to give you just a little bit of it and now the end is near and so i face the final curtain bop 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 i did it her way it's a song a funny parody oh i did oh. it her way Instead of I did yeah. it my way, because I'm oh. married to a tough New York woman. She had me tug out the trash. Yeah, yeah, I did it her. I gave her half my cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did it her yeah, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what is a man? What has he got? With his testicles. In a knot. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, I did it her way. I, everybody, her, her way. way. Yeah, they would love it. <laughs> yeah. All right, ready? Big finish. Ready? Yeah. I did it her, her way. way. 
Don't so now, worry. Worry. Be, be hacky. And what's the other one from the Partridge family? <laughs> Hello world, there's some jokes that we're telling. <laughs> Come on, Come on get, get hacky. hacky. That's funny. <laughs> Come on. Come on What's that thing you said last time about, you know, I realized I'm in Santa Clarita uh, in a pie shop making, <laughs> hoping I get a cold slice of pizza and I get paid $75 by Venmo six months from now. <laughs> what am I worried about? Come on, get, get hacky. hacky. <laughs> yeah. Funny. I had something else to tell you. I can't remember what it was. So I heard Frank Sinatra in that book that I was reading. He didn't necessarily like to sing that My Way song all the time because it kind of felt like it was, you know, you kind of like bragging and shit. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like, I did it my way. And it's like, you know, it's like, but I guess he would save it for certain. You know, you know, you know like, are there certain jokes you probably don't want it to every time? Because it takes a lot of energy and it's a lot of performance and a lot of. Yeah. Thank Well, thank God. Then, for me, at least, I have uh what I've developed over the last couple of years is, um, like, I kind of switch from topic to topic. Yeah. And I almost kind of leave myself a, a little bit of room to, that I can go, and I get to, it's not the same exact jokes every night. So I can almost feel my way through what I want to do. Like, in other words, I choose A over B because I feel like the audience might like A over B, the yeah. topic. Yeah, yeah. And then when I go to A and they laugh at something that's even in the setup, you know, I could switch to like, oh, they're interested in that. Like, in other words, whatever they shine their light on, for lack of a better term, yeah. I then try and amp up. Oh, you know what like, I mean? Yeah. So, so it keeps it fun for me. Yeah. And I'm feeding them meat and potatoes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, in other words, they, oh, tonight I, I said I'm into heavy metal. And 30 people out of 50 put their fist in the air. So now I have Ooh. an audience that likes heavy metal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I'll, I'll I, and it'll make it more fun for me knowing that, you know, okay, well, we're up and running now yeah, we're on this like, topic. Yeah. Um, There's like a connection there when you can mention a certain genre of music and people are like, boom, they're right there with you. Yeah, or like garage sales and flea markets. Mm. If there's 300 people and not one single person says they like garage sales or flea markets, I'll do one or two jokes and move on. Yeah. If I have 10 different husbands pointing at their wives behind their back because they have the sickness and they love garage sales and flea markets, then I know if I go into a bit, I'm going to have 10 husbands doubled over us howling. Yeah. And the other 300 people are all going to be on the edge of their seat laughing along like, hey, we don't even know what these guys are talking about. But he's making some kind of statement that means a lot. Yeah. Watch this. This is the ultimate. Have you ever done a drive-by? And, you know, again, half the garage sell people, oh, he even knows about the drive-by. Yeah. You know what that is? You we slow down. Slow down. Kind of see what's out there. See the what's yard. out there from the car, right? Yeah. You do 20 an hour. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you, you do a quick judgment, very quick. Very, it's 30 years of experience in 10 seconds. And what's, <laughs> what's the number one thing you don't want to see? You uh, know you're going to keep going. The yeah. number one thing. You don't want to see. Uh, it's going to keep you going. I don't know. Baby clothes. Oh, yeah. You're but I'm right. saying, watch yeah, this. When yeah. I present that to an audience yeah. of garage sale flea market they people, know. they know. When so, one person will yell baby clothes, and all of us will bust out laughing. Because yeah. we all know deep down inside. Do you remember Justin McKinney? Yeah. Well, I, I, I presented this to him, and I said, he was the first person I ever asked, what's the one thing that you, you will not stop, and it makes you sad? And he goes, baby clothes. <laughs> it was so funny how Justin knew it. That's funny. So it's a funny little, and also watch this, it gets the audience involved. It's not yeah. just, hey, what do you do for a living, you in the red hat? Yeah. You know what I mean? Where'd you get that shirt, Kmart? You know, it's funny when... <laughs> I'm sorry, that's your yeah. joke. No, you can have it. They uh, Kmart. That's fine. I miss Kmart, but um, they. Uh, it's funny that when you when I really think about things, like I don't really want to buy stuff like I used to. Like twenty five years ago, you'd be on the road. You're like, oh, I want to buy CDs. Well, you're not, you're not buying CDs because you could just listen to it on Spotify, right? You know, books. I'm like, I don't really want to read this book. I can just listen to it, you right? Know? You know what I mean? So that that so people are kind of getting rid of their books, their CDs, their. I guess some people want to buy albums because they have record players, but I'm not really. Imagine lugging those around. I know exactly. Like, Very few people would probably buy them. Probably yeah. because they're heavy, they break. Right. 
And comedians, every now and then, they'll be like, you ever thought about putting your act on vinyl? I'm like, no, that's more of like a a niche kind of comedian who's got a huge following, and then he's got like those hipsters that want... Like Mark Maron could probably sell an album of his set, you know? I could top it. You know my Mark Maron story, right? No. See, uh, dude, Forrest Gump's got nothing on me. Okay. I did 181 performances of Beat a Subway Cops Comedy, my oh, one-man show, yeah. in a 99-seat theater that sold into a sitcom. Mm. And on the very last night, someone had told me, take a picture of your audience for good luck. Mm. So I finished. It was 99 seats. at the last night, 181 shows. And there was maybe 30 or 40 people. I could feel it out there in a yeah. 99-seat theater. And I took a bow, and I came back out and said, hey... Um, I was always told, take a picture of your last audience. So I had a throwaway camera, and I took one photo with the flatch. Disposable camera, yeah. With the flatch, yeah. as they would say in North Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. It had a flatch. It had a flash, man, the flatch. Yeah. And I developed, I, then I moved to L.A., I developed the film like three years later. Yeah. And who's sitting right down in the middle covering his face like this. Oh, it's hilarious. Mark Marin. Wow. Comes sniffing around. To like, see the magic. I mean, yeah, maybe he was like, oh, I want to see what this one-man show is all about. Yeah, how come it's getting so much... Uh, oh, wow. yeah. you should do his podcast. Well, I would like to if he you invites me. Podcast. I like the guy. Yeah, that'd be He's cool. He's funny as a mofo. Yeah, he Want to hear a good funny. mental anchor? Yeah. I did... A Brass two, Monkey. I did <laughs> Zing. I did two Brass sets in it. Hong Kong. You heard of Hong Kong? Yeah, real quick. You could you could say Brass Monkey Pox. Story chop. Brass Monkey Pox. Brass Monkey Pox. That funky monkey pox. <laughs> I knew you'd love it. I knew you'd love it. I'm not a story chopper. I'm a story improver. Listen. Yeah. I don't know if you know this. They say. Write that down. You might need that. They say the only way you can get monkey pox, and I'm not being derogatory. It's in the news, is you have to be at a, a, a gay Beep. orgy for 15 hours. Really? A gay orgy Beep. for 15 hours unprotected. I just beeped it. And I'm like, who are they trying to kid? Like I could last 15 hours at a gay orgy. <laughs> you get it? Like yeah. you Don't thought I was going to say it, it wasn't going. Be hacky. <laughs> I know. Oh, have you ever like you know? Hold on, they, I did two yeah. shows in Hong Kong. Yeah, and I watched David Letterman that night, and um, uh, he did his set on David Letterman. Mark Maron. Yeah, Mark Maron. So it was a wow. good mental anchor. What was it like being in Hong Kong? It was humid. Yeah. Uh, everybody was Chinese, everyone, all the firemen, all the cops. Wow. And uh, the only thing, I went to a Chinese restaurant, <gasps> Yeah. and all, all the employees were Jewish. Wow. Hey, Jing. Jing. Oh, no. He's Look, sure. I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. makes no sense. Yeah. Uh, it was humid, but the audiences were American-speaking. Mm. And I, English-speaking fr- or American? English and English. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On Friday night, I got a partial uh, standing ovation. Wow. And jokes about the subway worked. Because wow. watch this. Almost everybody was from New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. White guys that are there in the toy business, manufacturing. Yeah. Oh, cool. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It was their night out. It wasn't, you know. Was it like a big city like New York? Did it look like a Yeah, it looks just like New York, and there's traffic everywhere. And, wow. and we did one or two radio shows, me and the other comedians. Wow. And would you, but you know who was one of the comedians? A guy named Butch. Do you remember Butch? Butch had, Bradley. Butch Br- yeah, Butch no, Bradley. B- Butch Bradley has reddish hair, right? Yeah, and he's in he's in no, Vegas. No, the other Butch. It was he had an Italian name. He had curly hair. He looked like Stallone. I don't Butch, know him. You don't remember Butch? I don't remember Butch. Don't yeah, know. he. That was the last gig I ever did he with might him. Might have been an East Coast comedian. He, he was like from Jersey. Did no, you eat, he, Did you eat Chinese food every meal out there? Or did they have other? The types? joke that I wrote down was yeah. every meal looked like Fear Factor. Every meal. Oh yes. Yeah, so yeah it was it was yeah. a turnoff. Yeah. And I, I don't get know how graphic even, we can yeah. get. I grew up in Long Island, and I thought when you go to Hong Kong, you get five dollar BJ's, Beep. right? But it's five dollars yeah. uh-huh. everywhere you go is going to be signs, huts. Yeah. That's what you thought in your mind. Thought in my mind everywhere you go, it's five dollar, five dollar. Beep. And uh, <laughs> the other thing was that they'll pay five hundred dollars for a pair of Levi's. Did you ever hear that growing up in Long Island? Uh, I heard about that in Russia. So I brought like four pairs of Levi's. Oh, I was wow. going to sell for two hundred each because I'm shrewd like that. <laughs> I did two shows. And I got fourteen hundred U.S. in an envelope, and they paid for the hotel and the flight. Mm. I got fourteen hundred. I came home and gave it right to my landlord on wow. Witsit. On Witsit. See, that's the thing, though. When it comes to like the foods, like I'm not in even even just like regular 
I don't like... No, I, dude, even if you get sick there, you yeah, get stomach poisoning, yeah. you're in a strange hospital, it's, it wasn't worth it. Yeah. But it's a good story. I mean, how many people do you know have done sets? But I know just... I'm just saying... In like, a I, communist I, country. I know people love... Uh, they love lobster. And I, 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 I look at the... It looks, it looks like cockroach to me. It creeps me out. I don't like lobster... I don't like food that looks like it's supposed to look like, you know, like creepy looking shrimp with eyes and little legs that like, yeah, I, I don't like that kind of stuff. Oof. I like, you know, oof. I like when food looks like food, like a cheeseburger looks like a nice cheeseburger. Like you can picture. I don't want. Yeah. No, uh, no, no I, weird stuff. I've been to Canada for one day to shoot Miss Congenia, uh, to shoot, watch this. I'm going to top you now to shoot how to lose a guy in 10 days. I'm in a backyard in Canada in a police uniform and I weighed like 260. I was as fat as could be. I had more chins than a Chinese phone book. Mm. Come on, get hacky. Hacky. So the only two people in this backyard in Toronto, Canada, yeah. is John DeResta, not an extra, and the lead singer of the Black Crows, Keith Robinson, or whatever oh, his cool. name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy with the long, skinny face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too hot to handle. Yeah. And he didn't say hello to me or look at me, and we were the only two wow. people on the set. You know why? Why? He thought I was background. Oh. He thought I was atmosphere. Oh, that sucks. He thought I was a hero. On my sitcom, we called them heroes. Oh, wow. No, really? He didn't say hello to me. It was weird. We were wow. standing five feet. You know, like, we're like both Dude. scooping Skittles into a bowl at the craft services. Wow. I don't know what the guy's like. I don't know, but that doesn't sound like a cool They move. hurt my feelings. Yeah. Sometimes it hurts. Yeah. No, I, you know what? See, that's the thing. Remember, there's... We talked about this in the early part of the podcast. There's the nice guys, you know, meet and greet, go out and say hi to people. Right. Flashlight stickers. Hey, I'm the party starter. You know, and then you got those guys. Are the but, and There's no rhyme or reason in which one's successful. But I will say this, and I learned this from Mike Black. He said, whatever you project, that's the kind of fans you draw in. So, you know. Right. I know a guy... Screw it, it's Mike Black. I know a guy. He he would open for Dice Clay, and he would open for John Panette. So Dice Clay, his fans were like the, Hey, Dice! Ooh! You know? Right. And then John Panette's fans would come, We brought pies and coupons for you guys. Or oh, no come shit. to our store. We have we own a restaurant up the street. We would love to have you. Yeah, That's what yeah. I'm saying, because he was the nice guy. That, you know, that yeah, kind of wow. vibe. So I don't know. Like that, I, if I'm in the backyard with someone, I would like to think I'm going to talk to somebody for the only two actors there. I know. I just know how I am. No, he wasn't you an know? actor. He was there because his wife was uh, oh. Goldie Horn's daughter. Okay. Yeah. What was her name? I don't know. But I know what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. I don't know. I'm not gonna. It's all know. good. Yeah. I just wanted to top your story. That's all. That's good. Hey, I'm going to throw out some stories. We're going to have to talk. We're going to do a lightning round. I'm going to. I'm going to throw out words. We're not gonna we're not gonna ping pong this. I'm okay, gonna, go ahead. I'm just gonna I'm throw out a word like a like an object. Dude, my mind is razor sharp. And you and you're gonna tell a story or something if you have one. And if not, we'll just move on. But I know I'm gonna connect. As, as a comedian, as we're comedians, when you're backed up against the wall and the crowd's waiting for you to laugh, boom. So I'm gonna throw out a word. Yeah, dude, I'm and, seasoned. Uh, okay, here we go. We're, we're go ahead. Try to keep these under if you can't under 45 seconds. Go ahead. Do you have any stories, any bits, any jokes, any ideas about sunglasses? Uh, yes, actually, this is going to be an unusual one. I was in the homeless outreach unit in the New York City Transit Police, and we had to kick people out that lived in the subway tunnels. Mm. And the person that had the most years in the subway tunnel at 2nd Avenue for 17 years, the homeless outreach unit would kick him out every night. Wow. And he would come back down like a cockroach, and his name was Sunglasses. Sunglasses. And do you know why? He, he wore sunglasses. sunglasses in the subway tunnel. Wow. 17 years he lived in the wow. subway. And every single night of our lives, we put him in the homeless outreach van, took him to a shelter, gave him a sandwich mm. that was drier than a mummy scrotum. Whoa. No mustard, no mayo. Next topic, ice cream. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. I first heard that I on wrote Laverne that. and Shirley. I heard that on Laverne and Shirley when I was a kid. Well, I wrote that. Yeah, I sent that's it in. That's great. That's I didn't, great. You didn't know that? Yeah. Listen. Yeah. Schlemiel, Schlemazel, Hoffenweg Incorporated. Yeah. We're going to do it. Oh, I can not top that story, but I was in Milwaukee, and I was staying at the, I want to say it's the International Hotel, and I looked out the window, and I thought, damn, that looks like, I, look, I Googled it, and that they used that building that I was looking at at the beginning of Laverne and Shirley. And where were you, in Milwaukee? Milwaukee. 
Was it? Can you see it outside the condo? Were you staying at the no, condo? No, I was staying at the International Hotel. Oh, okay, got it, got it, yeah, got it. Got which it. is crazy because here's real quick though with that hotel. Apparently, the price increased each night. Like Thursday, it was like one twenty-five. Friday it was like one seventy five, and then by Saturday it was like two ten. I didn't realize it when I. So watch this yeah. real quick. I didn't want to stay in that condo. The first paid gig I ever got as a comedian, I stepped into a comedy club I was doing it six months, and my friend who now owns Gotham, yeah. Chris Mazzilli, goes, "Hold on, hey, you're John DeResta." I said, "Yeah." He goes, "You want to do a gig this weekend in the Bronx?" Mm. I go, "I do." He goes, "It pays eighty bucks." I said, "Are you kidding me? That was all the money in the world." Yeah. So I get to the gig. And um, I had never asked for permission. I got a paid gig so quickly, I never filled out the paperwork to have mm. a second job wow. with the NYPD. Yeah. I do the gig. I had to do 10 minutes. And my opening joke was, thank you for the gig. There was plenty of parking. And it was the first <laughs> time I just made a reference. If it was yeah. hard for me to park, it was hard for them to park. Yeah. Got a huge laugh. And in the middle of that first laugh, a guy walks by with a tray of beers, and he looks just like Lenny. From Lenny and oh, Squiggy. That's funny. And Hello. As, as I'm getting yeah. a laugh or two laughs, like they yeah. already bought into me, he just walked right by me holding a tray of beers. And all I could say out loud was, Look at this Lenny and Squiggy looking motherfucker. And everyone knew what I meant because I didn't know which was Lenny and Squiggy. Yeah. Huge yeah, laugh. Yeah. 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 Had a great set and was like, Wow, I, you know, I made it. I mean, I got. That's funny. Okay. Watch this. The next day, I go to work early as a transit cop in the homeless unit, going to look for sunglasses. Yeah. Sergeant takes me in the back room. He goes, you, get in the fucking back room. Uh-oh. Real serious look. He goes, you did a show last night in the Bronx at the uh, Theodore Caroni Post BFW, right in Throg's Neck under the bridge. That was you, wasn't it? Mm. I go, yeah, I know I didn't fill out the thing yet. I'm really sorry. He goes... That Lenny and Squiggy motherfucker was my brother-in-law, and that was the funniest shit I ever oh. saw in my life. Oh, and wow. And he busted out oh, laughing. Oh, that's so cool. He goes, we're going to call him Lenny and Squiggy for the rest of our lives. <laughs> Dude, Lenny it was Squiggy. like, you know, it was like, what a, what a boomerang. That's great. And look, you all you did was bring up Lenny and Squiggy, and I topped it. Next. Boom. Next. Okay, this will be the last one. And this is... Uh, I think I know the answer, and this I don't want it to be a downer. And if it is, you can keep moving on or whatever. We'll pick okay. Top. It's not that much of a downer, but um, I wanted to know about this. I don't know why this came out in my mind, but or why it came up in my mind. But when I really thought about this, you you were a cop, and part of being a cop is the person has to have a gun. Did you ever? That's what I'm saying. If it's sad, if you had to kill no. someone, I mean, you know. No, no, no. I did. Go, did go you ahead. ever have to a shoot the gun or b unholster it and Put it in both hands and kind of like yes, swing yes. around. Took, t- t- uh, took it. Yeah. Out. They call. And I'll bre- just be. I'll pay attention. I'll I'll hang up on the line and just listen on the radio for this one. They but. call breaking leather. Wow. So to take it out of your holster is to break leather. Oh. So I broke leather about three or four times in twelve years. How many times did you break wind? Oh, that's funny. Zing. <laughs> twice the gun was yeah. pointed at people, ready to so go. Twice. Twice. One was a female bum. The other one was a male bum. One in the Bronx, one in Coney Island, Brooklyn. The other times it was just broke out of the holster and was at my side at the ready. So you take it out of the holster and you have it 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 pointed at the floor. Yeah, finger off the trigger. Yeah. Yeah, that's on a car stop too. Not that we did many, but you never know. Yeah. Um, And then this is very sad. I always say the closest I ever came to shooting somebody was myself because I was so depressed. And the only life I ever saved was my own for, by quitting. It was a very depressing job. And mm-hmm. I, yes, I owned three or four handguns at one time. Wow. And they're nothing but dangerous. Yeah. They're nothing but dangerous. You're not interested in... Nothing, this, not at all. When you have to do the thing... I mean, you, you, you got kind of serious if you had to actually had to pull your gun out and like... Point it at someone. Yeah, I had you, to do it in a diner point, in the Bronx. Whoa. And I had to do it with an old homeless bag lady in Coney Island. She broke a bottle yeah. on a garbage pail and came at me with the razor shard, the handle, and the d- neck with yeah. the sharpness. And you guys have tasers back then? No, no, so you had night no. Or guns. We had nightstick and mace, but on your oh. first day, guess what an old timer will do? Get rid of the mace. No, he takes it and squirts it on the floor, empties it, and hands it back and says, You're going to thank me in the long run. Oh. Because now you had to go from nightstick to gun. Oh. Right? Yeah, there was no yeah. time for mace. It was broken. Yeah. 
Oh, so if someone's really coming in, I mean, this is not rehearsal. This no, is this like, is not rehearsal. So this she's is like, Subway of Come New on, York. You mother. And she, Dude, no, so, but tell me about the diner, the diner one, though. So she's got the, the thing. No, the diner was a homeless guy, and a the, white guy. Oh, wait, who was the lady? She, she was the female bumette down in Coney Island, broad daylight. She's the one that broke the she thing. She broke the bottle on the edge of the garbage pail yeah. and came at me and was a good seven to ten feet away, but she was encroaching on my safety. Yeah. And I pulled my gun out and I pointed at her and my in a thousandth of a second I said, I don't want to go to jail for the next fifteen years eating ass. Yeah. I don't mind having my own ass eat. You know what I mean? Did you yell at her like back you yell at her like back off, back so I, off? I, she just kept coming at me, so I holstered my weapon, turned around and ran. And she was so you, chasing me through the streets of Coney Island <laughs> with the broken bottle. It looked like Benny Hill. Wait, People were looking at her. That means you put it back in I there? I put it back in because I knew I was going to run. And yeah. God forbid I tripped with the gun out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want me running over. I just holstered my weapon and turned and ran. Wow. And, and I ran towards the, uh, the actual roller coaster. Wow. How, I don't know if you know the roller coaster. Yeah. How the many, cyclone. How many seconds? That was only about, it. the way I remember it is like 15, 20 seconds till she just disappeared. So she just gave up on While chasing While I'm running you. through like the uh, rides at Coney Dude, Island in the weird. booths. That must have been weird. Seeing people, it, it was yeah. enough to people look at me like, yeah, like well, why is why the cop is he, running? Why is the cop running? Is he chasing running? someone or yeah, no, yeah. they knew that you were being chased? Yeah. She had, you know, uh, and she had, she legitimately was a bag woman. Her shoes were ba- black paper bag, uh, black, wow. what do you call it? Like a yeah, plastic yeah, bag. Yeah. Her dress was a black plastic bag. Her upper shawl was a black oh. plastic bag. Hold on, it gets better. She had a coufé on made of black garbage bags. Wow. Do you know what a coufé is? A coufé or something like that, right? Her hat. Wow. And she'll ha- she kept saying, I'll have your gun in your paycheck. Wow. I'll be living in your house. She knew all the dialogue. Wow. We kicked her out of the subway, me and about 15 cops, and when I turned around to thank them, they were all gone. Wow. And she, that's when she broke the bottle. Like, she was pissed that we kicked her out of the subway. Wow. Now we were on the streets of Brooklyn. So what did you do when you ran? You have to, so after you run, you get away. Then what do you do? You call for backup? No, I or? didn't want to call for backup because I was embarrassed. Yeah. You know what I mean? She disappeared. So then when you just start whistling and then, I think I'll finish my shift over here. It, yeah, no, I just <laughs> went back and stood next to, this, to the token wow. clerk. Wow. And then the next- all you do is stand next to the token booth and stand in a puddle of piss. Ugh. For ten hours, and then the next time you clocked in and you had to be down there, did you kind of like like is she here? Hello? Yeah, obviously I kept my eye out for her because they are very territorial. They yeah. will stay in the same spot and they'll live in the same like sunglasses. Yeah, live downstairs at Second Avenue for seventeen years. Did you ever see her again? Her, I never saw her again. So that's good. So that was like that incident happened, and she's like, okay, I'll move. I'm gonna move on down the road. But there was a bum that lived in Coney Island uh, for years. Any any transit cop or NYPD would tell you Sammy Collins. Mm. He was the mayor of Coney Island. I mean, he mm. was the bum that called whenever the cops messed with him. He would call nine one one and call ten thirteen, which yeah. means a cop needs assistance. Mm. So just to mess with all of us oh, twice a day, he yeah. would go to a payphone and say, "Cops being shot, Nathan's." Wow. And woo, everybody shows up, and it's just him being a bum. Mm-hmm. What about the white guy? Or should we save that for the next podcast? Save for the next one. All right. Yeah, it's all Dude, good. Dude, that was good, man. We covered a lot of good did things. Did I give a shout-out to Adrian Vida? Yes, we did. And we gave a shout-out to everybody. <laughs> we want to thank you guys for, like I said, leaving those comments. And please do the reviews. The reviews Grr. really helps a lot. It helps a lot. Anything else you want to plug? Your, your Instagram, your... At John DeResta. That's right. Follow him. He has a. I love John's saga. Yeah. Now my life's a saga. <laughs> yeah. My life's a saga. Yeah. There's this comic that we know, and <laughs> he, he would write all these crazy things about. Hey, I'm spending the night in a men's shelter. I'm going to be at a 24 hour. I'm fitness. quitting the I'm, business. I'm quitting the business. I'm thinking of doing something drastic. Yeah. And then John, as a having a heart, you know, even he's an a hole with a heart of gold. There you go. Yeah. There you go. And I'm a good a-hole. Yeah, you're, you're, you're like... I'm, I'm a, a good rat. You're like, I'm an angel? No, an a-hole. And you go, hey, I've been following your saga, man. And he's like, oh, my life's a saga? Right. Now my life's a saga? A saga? All right, buddy. Yeah, dude. Um, I, like I said, I just wanted to get it off my chest that I identify as an a-hole. You know what I mean? Good. I was born that way. That's good. You know, and I'm from... Look, I was a cop in the subway of New York alone. You stand yeah. there alone. Yeah. For 12 years. In a police uniform. Damn, dude. It smelled like urine. The radios don't work. Mm. How can I... Watch this. How can I not be an a-hole? Mm. Right? Yeah. Then throw in a couple of movie credits and I think who I am? Do you think that... Movies uh, that were made in yeah. the last century? Yeah. 
Would you ever want? What's a what's a police auxiliary thing? What's that? Mean? Never in a million years. What does that mean? That means you failed the police test and you're a buff and you want the power. Oh. They're the biggest pack of losers you ever met in your <laughs> life. Really? Ever? <laughs> Think of the worst open mic comedians oh, no. ever. Think of the wow. worst open micers. Yeah. That you ever dealt with, whether it was in Clovis or yeah. L.A. or New York. Wow. Watch this. Times it by 50 how oh. scuzzy they are, mm. and then give them a, a, a square badge that think they have the power. Yeah. Dude, and all they did was get us in trouble, because they oh. want to tackle the guy that's smoking a cigarette, but they don't have the power to arrest him. Oh. So now they're holding him down because he smoked a cigarette. For me, who's on my way back to sign out and go do a set as a comedian, yeah. now I'm being called off the train because an auxiliary cop has tackled <laughs> a homeless guy. Wow. And says to me, and I go, what did he do? Well, he just took a shit. Oh. And I go, what do you want me to do? Well, that's uh, a violation, 187757, the <laughs> transit penal code, officer. Yeah. We're going to run out of 12. Yeah, I know. yeah. Central B advisor. Wow. Took a, he took a Dukakis southbound. Dude, country. I feel bad. You know what it is, man? I think I'm, not that I would be a police auxiliary. I can't believe I saw that fire and I didn't tell anyone. I'm the kind of guy that usually tells people. Like I would call authority well, watch to tell this. someone. I could, I'm so against auxiliary, and it, yeah. look, they do a great job. And yeah. a few of them have been killed. I give them all the all the. Um, but my experience yeah. as has you, been. As you're talking, I'm just going to Google to see if that fire got out of hand. Okay, my I'm, experience yeah. has been. Yeah. That. There was even stand-up comedians, dude. That were one or two of them were headliner comedians that made money on the road. And then look, they looked at me and went like this. I'm also auxiliary, you know that, in the uh, Central Park. Oh, they would say that. And they would say, and guess what? My whole attitude would change. That, mm, mm, mm. 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 What's a, what about volunteer firefighter? That's a good thing. That's, well, volunteer firemen, their heart's yeah. more in the right place. You know, they do put fires out. Yeah. Um, oh, you know who else was a big pain in the ass? The uh, Guardian Angels. Oh, yeah, it's nasty. They just like, like auxiliary. Curtis Sliwa. No, oh. do like, nothing but get the transit cop in trouble. Wow. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type in fire 170. Let's. Dude, you're checking the news on no, my time. I what know. am I, I wanna... schmuck on wheels over here? I can't believe it. No, they haven't even talked about the fire yet. What am I, on the back burner? No. I am just, I in the pay me I, no I mind list? I just feel so bad that there was a fire and I didn't tell anyone. What am I, a schmuck on wheels over here? All right, there's no, you know, I guess it, I guess it got put out. Look at you with the fire guilt. <laughs> the fire guilt. I mean, yeah, you know what? I did that thing that you're not supposed to do in big cities. Oh, somebody also called 911. That's what I thought. Katie Genovese. You don't know about that case? No. She was raped and murdered in New York, and everyone that heard it said someone else will call. Wow. And nobody called. Wow. Hundreds of people. She was in the courtyard of an apartment building. Wow. And everyone said someone else will call. Wow. Google it up. That means right now half the... North Hollywood is burned to the ground and firemen are dying because of you. Damn. No, it can't be. It can't. Now, you know what I was thinking? Because also there was like that Mexican taco truck that looked really good. And there's all these people. They probably had a lot more invested in the fire being close to them than we do way over here. Dude, you can make all excuses you want. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Guess okay. what you did? You made your fire. Now sleep with it. Oh, gosh. Listen, you had a rush here to get this podcast done for 17 people. That's true. We gave them all shout-outs. Yeah. Once again, You're like Stuttering out. John with the shout-outs. Gagia. Christopher McCrane. Wilfredo Matos. Gagia. Patch, thanks, honey. Patches, thanks, honey. Drew Hillman, 100% Canadian maple syrup. Adrian. Adrian Vita. Shout-out to Adrian Vita. I want to give a shout out to Jimmy DeResta. I want to give a shout out to my my friend uh, John DeResta's three children, Sabrina, Matthew, and Shannon. Shannon. I want to give a shout out to the grandbaby. We don't know what sex you'll be, but we want to. And give you Carlos a shout out. from and the uh, thrift store. Carlos from the thrift store. Did you should do a special in the thrift store? I sh I'm thinking about it. The guy we get along really well. Pack it in there. And know? I made steps. Yeah. Remember, he had to walk up like a big 30-inch oh, yeah, step. Yeah, yeah. I made a stay away for him. You know how you told me that trick? Or, or not a trick, but like a thing? You, this is, I did not know this. Like, every chair is 18 inches. and Right, every the, table is 30, 25. 25. 25 leeway, 30 to the top. Are, are steps a certain... Yes, what, uh, watch, you're funny. I looked can, it up the other can day. Can I guess? I'm going to guess. I would say the average human being likes to walk up... Uh, 
eight inches, eight, eight to ten inches of step. Seven inches high or seven and a quarter as high, which oh. that's what most human beings are used to. Yeah. And nine inches deep. Oh, because their feet have to their feet have go to. in there. Boom. That's interesting. Now, watch this. The, the place I found out that that was not universal, you have never been to the old Yankee Stadium that was built in like 1915. Mm, interesting. And the steps were completely built yeah. to like 10 inches by like five. Whoa. So not only could you not get your footing, you're, you're dealing with almost like you're something sh- that's more like a ladder. Yeah. And if you lose your footing, you're going down 10, 12 you're, you're rows. you step up higher. And Dude, then it was the most dangerous deep. thing on earth. Wow. I can't believe it lasted 80 years or whatever. Wow. Are they still there, those steps? No, the, 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 I was only at the original Yankee oh. Stadium once. It was knocked down. Wow. Yeah. I went to a uh, the L.A. County Fair, and at the L.A. County Fair, they had this old schoolhouse. And in the old schoolhouse, the lady, the teacher, the, the pretend teacher, you know, but she was part of the, one of the volunteers. She goes, the first thing a lot of people notice is that um, this the desk, like you'd see on Little House on the Prairie, um, the bench would seat three children. And every modern person was like, really, three children? Because guess what? We're a lot bigger nowadays than they were in the late 1800s. Well, watch this. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to top you with the measurements. Okay. So the average seat is 18 high. The average tabletop for the whole world, every human being, is 30 yeah. inches. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, what was I going to tell you? I had a funny fact. 18, 30. Mm. I forgot it. It had something to do with the table. Oh, good, man. Well, we'll do a shout out. We're going to end <laughs> this podcast. This one stopped recording, but we got the backup one going. So that's good. Uh, John, I want to thank you. <laughs> and uh, It's all good. I forgot my last point. We're all good. It. Well, you got it. Something thank about you. furniture and oh. the height or the look. Cool. That works. Okay. okay. You got it. Bye. Bye. Oh, I looked down that stopped recording. I don't know. But this one's still recording, so that's good. Oh.